Welcome to part number 21 of Gran Turismo 1. This is the Movie Chicane, and today we're going to start the endurance section of the game by doing the special stage All Night Enduro number 2. And with me, I got a special guest on the stream. Introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Mikhail 24 d live from the LBCC Student Life Building. I don't know why I'm here, probably right, because my house decides to have an issue regarding uh, outlets, but yep, join in with TMC and how are you doing? Pretty good, how are you? Good, just uh, chilling. Hope you, guys, hope you do pretty well on today's race. I think I'll do fine. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, go on. I mean, it is a city street course. We're using modified street cars, which hey. is not, not pretty, pretty cool, actually. Are, are you trying to take my job? That's what I was going to say. No, I'm kidding. So yeah, what he just basically said, we're using modified street cars here. How long is this one, Abstract Sky? This one is about an hour to an hour and a half, maybe less than that. But um, yeah, basically we're getting in our server that we won in the Mega Speed Cup and we're going to tune this thing up all the way. Now, I know this thing's going to be OP in terms of power. However, special stage route 11 going in reverse, it's really difficult to pass. You only have a chance to pass all the straightaways and... Yeah. I mean, it's basically Monaco. Just like more like more nighttime flare and we're using not open wheel cars, but pretty great street cars. And yeah. we will and will we will see some very faster cars once, you know, as the parts goes on. I can't spoil which one, but you get the you get the deal. I don't think you wait. Do you, you know this race? I mean, I did a test earlier, and like, no, they were pure. No. They were pure like Japanese cars, like Supras, RX sevens, and that. And then there was like a random Honda Civic in there, which got murdered at the start. I mean, what I'm saying is that there will be faster cars, like you know, because you, you have two more endurance races planned, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Both of the other endurances, the special stage all night number one and the Grand Valley three hundred, I do believe they use race cars. So yeah. So consider this as a opening course, as I would say. I wouldn't say an opening course. The only reason why is because in reverse, SSR 11 is even worse than it already is. It's already okay, bad maybe, enough. <laughs> okay, maybe a, maybe a huge a huge as like appetizer, if anything. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Okay, I'm, I'm just trying to like get away with food, um, you know, food <laughs> references, but whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm eating like my lunch right now, so ah, no bear with me. Yeah, no worries, dude. You enjoy yourself while I suffer through this race. So let's look at the stats of the car real quick. So 813 horsepower and 1,326 kilograms. All right. So let's go to the special events. All night number two, and let's get started. All right, let's take a look at the grid. So we have an NSX Type R on pole, Lancer Evo 3, RX-7, a Chaser, and an R33. Ooh, no, no Honda Civic, so... We have a pretty good field here. Let's go. Why are you so offended? Like, why are you so offended with the Honda Civics, by the way? Well, I'm not offended by the Honda Civics. It's just that when I did when I did the test race earlier with like the TRD 3000 GT, I didn't do the whole distance, obviously. But um, there was a Honda Civic in there, and I got eaten up at the start. So that was like basically just one back marker. You know what I mean? Yeah, good point. So you know, I I kind of want that challenge. So um, what did you want to talk about today, dude? Well. Uh... I just actually ended up uh, looking at one of my Discords. I can't say who because they might end up watching. <laughs> but we have a huge argument regarding um, Super GT Street GT300 class, aka the GT3s versus the MC slash JF GT, like you know, fast basically. The GT500 or Kuhasa or what? GT300, GT300 actually. Hang on, qualifying really only would come in handy in GT6 or GT Sport. Where the AI starts out 45 seconds ahead of you. Of course, in those games, qualifying, no such thing besides sport mode. Yeah, besides sport mode, I mean, even then, like, that's the challenge, I guess. Maybe Polyphian knows they have crappy AI, and so they just literally <laughs> let you start that far ahead. But, um, anyways, so what about GT3 cars in Super GT? Uh, okay, so this whole argument was like months ago. Back then, when, uh, in, I think uh, like last season, when Good small racing team has to make AMG won the third, third title in like a few years. And now, there were some people. Now, I'm not the biggest Super GT fan, I'm barely getting into it this year. Good Smile is a team that drives the AMGs, right? Yeah, the AMGs and they're the GT3s. Okay. And they were just. 
and I think they have like, so, so much like fans, so, like, so much knowing because it's like an Atasha race car. Okay. So it's just so well known, like compared to the other like GT300 like or GT2 back then, or like all the way in GT, like, G, JGTC. Like back then, they don't really care as much, but when it, when it comes to like nowadays, it's starting to become a thing where people don't mind GT3s that much because you know. Oh, there's this Hatsune Miku car that's winning too much, blah blah blah. And I'm like, really? So, it's a complaint about dominance of one team, or what? It kind of does, yeah. Like, I already told him, like, you know, it's the same thing with NASCAR, it's the same thing with IndyCar, F1, and he just had that, I think they still had that thing where Mercedes is dominating times. But I told him about that, and then he kind of, like, mellowed out, because I also mellowed up with my bias. Yeah, I mean, I've been I've been mailing out the whole time because I'm just getting used to Super GT as a whole because right. I've only spent like two years. But right now they're just like this one guy. I mean, I don't want to say names. Yeah, yeah, no he, problem, no problem. Because yeah, because in fact I may have raced him and he actually got a video of me racing him. But he didn't really like GT3s as a whole probably because of this, and it ended up becoming a situation where he said people with GT3s, the teams. They need to go to like drive the G what's it called merch chassis, aka the BRC, the Prius, etc. Or G GFS, like say like kind of thing. Nissan GTR. Or else they had to go to another series. And I'm so like, their argument is driving like that the other teams in Super GT three hundred category have to drive the specific Super GT model cars or else they can't race. Pretty much, yeah, because here's the thing, because we already seen because what I'm noticing is that GT3 is like kind of like around the world and everything. You can see GT3s in IMSA, you can see GT3s in Blancpain, you can see GT3s in Bathurst, Suzuka, you know, around the world, right? Yeah. It looks like some people didn't want that. And Why? I don't know. I don't know. I really just do not know. Because some people, even people said that you don't like Super GT if you like GT3 cars. I'm like, really? That doesn't make Are any you? sense. Exactly. That's like saying you're not a NASCAR fan if you only like K and N. It's just like, <laughs> it, it, if you if you like the division or or the series, but you like a specific you know category, of course, within the division, then that's one thing, you know. But to go and flat out but say you're not a fan of the series in general is just pretty dumb. I mean, he said this one particular guy said I I came to GT to enjoy GFF GT and March Classic cars, not my um, like GT series. So I'm like, are you fucking serious? And this is the guy who actually hates the um, G G G um, Gizmond Racing Team because, you know, it's an anime car, he bars and like, big fans of it anyway. He think that not a lot of those fans are like racing fans in general, which I, I proved him wrong. Because right. I'm a fan of, because I am a fan of both racing first and then anime second. Right. So it kind of, so it kind of fits either way. But God, I just hate this goddamn argument. Like I told him, like not to be like too biased. <laughs> Hang on, Maldonado going strong through the inside. He was talking about the RX-7, who just like punted me trying to go on the inside of the chicane. Oh, I hit the wall. I'm still in third though. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. And I have racing uh, super hard. I have the hardest compound of tires too. So try to win on strategy. Ah, uh, hard. Uh, suck for that. <laughs> you child, you. Anyways, um. <laughs> The main thing I want to say about that argument, dude, is, like, dominance in motorsports has been a thing since the beginning, dude. You know, look at... It look, is. Like, people complain about, like, the, the good old days of racing when it's just like, dude, look at NASCAR, for example. Richard Petty won every single race because he had money. Look at Formula One. L look at the 19 1988 season, you know, when McLaren won 15 of the 16 rounds. I think it was 16 rounds. But they only lost one race. And it was too Ferrari, you know? It's just like, motor dominance in racing is always going to be a thing, dude. No matter what. You know, it's a part of the sport. It's a part of sports in general, dude. You know what I mean? It's just I, like... Yeah. Like, and I mean... And they just did really, and it, because Some people just don't like GT3s in general. They just want them out of Japan. Like... Here's the thing. If you want to have, like, you know, fans to, like, you know, keep an eye on a, like, a certain car, you gotta race it, right? Yeah. So, I mean, there's like, if you if you really, really want to have like the only Japanese, like, you know, motor chassis and JF JFFs, that would mean that some of these teams would de do not want to do that. They'll be out of business already. 
True. And, and, yeah. some of the, and some of these cars that are going to be gone, they're not going to be in Japan anymore. They're not going to be bought by, you know, rich, you know. Because that's what racing is. I know this is kind of weird, but racing is, like, also proves, like, shows that, like, the, our car, or our road car could be the best than the other road car. I know it's not, like, a big thing nowadays, but it still is. Yeah, road rail events really hasn't been around in racing that long. The, like, the closest thing you'll find to, to road rail events nowadays is, like, Formula E because of, like, the whole electric movement, which isn't a bad thing, in my opinion. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that, you know, if you, like, people that buy, like, a road car and then you look at this, like, you know, at the TV and you see, like, their own car, like, racing and winning, that's kind of, like, I guess a little bit, like, you know, I guess motivating, I guess. Exactly, and that was the problem with GRC, you know, when GRC went under this year because they decided to go to that stupid gold class by getting rid of all the, the supercars, it's like, dude, no one's, you know, if you go to a GRC race, I think I told you this when it happened, but if you go to a GRC race, you're not going to go and see... Tanner Fowl shirts, Scott Speed shirts, you're not going to see Patrick Sandell shirts, nor Colton Herta when he was... Oh, no, 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 Colton Herta? No, no, no. Austin Sindrick. I'm sorry, Austin Sindrick when he was running in supercar lights. Um, or GRC lights, I mean. You're going to see Subaru World Rally Team. You're going to see Volkswagen and Dreddy Rally Crash. You're going to see... You know, it's more of a brand sport than anything. It's the brand association. And, and like, the, you know, if you get rid of the Mercedes cars and just the GT3 cars in general, like the European ones and Super GT, then you lose a lot of that... You know, brand. What's called? Um, that brand, brand association. Yeah, brand recognition, brand association. It's just, I don't know. I mean, you, you really just can't, in my opinion. Yeah, and I mean, it's just so strange. I'm like, and here's the thing. And people really hate that one particular team, asking me to uh, give my racing. That team pretty much like, I think it brought a lot of people into Super GT. I will admit, for a lot of things. I mean, it has it's one of the spot. biggest reasons the anime. Well, one, I guess. I can't, I don't want to say like the only thing because there's way more. Because you have like the GT 500s, obviously. Right. You have some of the, the motor chassis. You even have a Prius. I mean, you cannot go through every like Nismo TV. Which, by the way, shout out to Nismo TV for bringing Super GT around the world. Yes. You cannot. You cannot watch like every like goddamn like stream. Well, someone saying, "Oh, it's that Prius." Yeah, dude, like, that's that's one of the biggest eye-catchers, in my opinion, of the GT300 class, the Prius. It's like, damn, dude, they really they really got a Prius. Even though it's not a hybrid motor that it has, it's still a Prius, a car that's associated with, like, you know, memes, you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, that, if I if people are talking about, like, Prius in a bad way, which I, I kind of hate it as well, but I want to kind of prove them that, you know, there is a race car in Japan that actually beats Lamborghinis and Ferraris yeah, it's a and Prius. Mercedes. <laughs> It's a Prius. Exactly. Like, and it, and it looks ugly, but it is pretty good. I don't I think it saying. looks ugly, dude, honestly. I think it looks pretty damn cool. Like, I don't know. Maybe for I me... I mean, maybe it's just the front. It's just the front that's actually a little bit weird, but it's still a good car. I like it. But, um, you know, there's so many reasons to like GT as a whole. And, I mean, there's even Natasha's, which you don't really see in, like, in general. That's the only series I've ever like remembered of a Atasha race car that's actually winning a championship or winning races or leading races. Yeah. And you know that's why pe that's why people nowadays in like you know Grand Sport they'll just make a Atasha livery race car, including me of course, because I I'm guilty of doing that so many times already. But people just want to be like their own good spot racing. They want to like you know have like an anime car and wing races and embarrassing people for the sake of it i mean with that logic of banning good smile racing because they're dominating the one class that's like wanting to ban mercedes for winning every single race in formula one or wanting to ban team penske for being so dominant in indie car racing that's like wanting to ban i don't know uh, joe gives racing and nascar for that it's like wanting to ban um citroen at at the time of the you know wrc's like Loeb era sebastian Loeb era that you know for winning all the races it's like no it, it, it's a part of the racing nashawood says i'm guilty of making my own itashas for that reason too lol <laughs> i mean so you see you, you have someone that you can relate to in the chat really who is this nashawood nice uh, good yep very, very good taste <laughs> but i mean uh, they're they're one of the more interesting kinds of cars in my like and it fits me with me being a anime slash racing fan or car fan in general 
Yeah. It's, it gives like some kind of an art, I feel. No, no matter, no matter if it's a good or bad taste, I, I guess. I mean, bad taste as like pretty much goddamn nude or weird. I mean, you never know. Yeah. Go, I mean, go to Japan. You probably might see a lot of. But you probably might. See, I already seen like one or two of them here in the United States. Not oh really? Like 40, yeah, I've seen like uh, a Nissan 370, a 370, 350. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, now I get it. Yeah. Yeah, and I saw like a, I, it's a Brian Katasha, and it has like some animation, probably like some like Love Life series. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but I seen a few of them myself. And I have actually seen some of them at last year's Anime Expo. Oh, really? I even, I even, yeah, like some like the Hatsune I see some of the other ones, blah blah. blah. I just really, I kind of wish to myself that if I ever get a car someday. And if it's like fully like sorry, hey, hang on, hang on a sec. All right, after Sky, see you, man. Thanks for stopping by, dude. Go on. Thanks for stopping by. But anyways, um, if I ever have a car, I want to have like my like, maybe once I have big, everything fixed, like you know, the engine, and everything. Like if I get ever get an old, old car, I want to get a fully at uh, ta like full Atasha stick of memes. Nice. <laughs> I mean, I'm you wouldn't mind just me and you just driving around, I guess. Here in California, if you don't mind, because I know you have a car, right? Well, yeah, I, have... I, I drive an 03 Eclipse. <laughs> hey, what's going on, Matthew? How's it going, dude? What's up, Matthew? But yeah, I'm just imagine that just me driving a Atasha delivery car for stick of, you know, why not? Yeah, like on my, when I used to own that Corolla back then, I, uh, dude, I used to slap, I would slap stickers on my car too. Like, I used to slap NASCAR K&N stickers. It was pretty funny to drive around with, like, K&N stickers and then, like, a bunch of racing stickers on the freaking old ass Corolla, like it was pretty damn funny. I bet you would do it on a Crips though. Uh, I haven't even had a chance to get K and N stickers yet. Like I thought about it, but I don't know. Just, get, like, I just put like a put a rookie sticker on the car. Why not? A rookie stickers on the bumper, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I probably should, huh? I mean, yeah, dude, dude that, that eclipse needs a lot of work though. I mean, me mechanical wise, it's pretty good, but cosmetic wise, like. I need to put more work into it. Yeah, I mean, it looks, I mean when I when I was in your like, I know it's like a somewhat quiet. There are times where the car just seems to like pop out a little bit more, and it's a little bit more loud. There are times when I saw it. Yeah, it's a little interesting, but whatever. But what I'm saying is that. Well, I got that problem. I actually got that problem fixed actually. So. Yeah, that's good at least. But it was an interesting issue. But um, you know, basically cars are meant for art. Which is why I don't understand why people just hate Atasha, basically. Maybe because it's just goddamn weaves, I guess. But yeah, probably. I mean, it's probably like a negative stigma towards it, you know. I mean, probably because people think that oh, wait, that guy probably doesn't have a girlfriend, blah blah blah. Which, what's the point? There's no relation to like having Natasha and having girlfriends to begin with. Right. Even though I've, even though I've been having, I've been hearing way too much part about my like, really guys. Is that what you're just gonna be saying? People talking about virgins about like cars. Where that guy has like you know a powerful engine underneath that hood, you probably spend a lot of money on it. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's just like you said, cars are just you know cars are a form of art as well. You know, people want to put their heart and soul into it, and it's just like you want to go really, you want to go and 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 crap talk someone for what they put on their car. Like I mean, I don't know. In some cases where it's just like if you put like a airplane spoiler on the Civic, and that's one thing, <laughs> you know. But if you actually go and put like effort and like. You know, actually go and put effort into making the car actually look pretty good, then that's another, you know what I mean? I don't have a problem with, I don't have a problem with somebody like putting decals on the car or whatever if they actually make it look really nice. You know, like a car show. Like if you yeah. go, like going to um, Race Wars or Import Face Off, you know, like some of the events here in Cali. You know, like you see yeah. a lot of those kind of cars, and you know, you, yeah, you do see Honda Civics with like crazy spoilers and stuff, but they actually have like the body kits and the engines to actually match it. Not just I'm, Jim Bob buying stuff from the junkyard and then just making it look good, you know? I mean, I would say that the only big wings I could actually agree with is like those time attack ones. No, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Like that one, I would definitely be down with. Just for the sake of if that's the only one I'm going to bring big wings in that case, that would be perfect sense. I mean, there have been scions where they have to put the wing on front of the car. All the downforce, so. yo. Yes, and it, it kind of works, so it does make sense. Yeah, speak, speaking about time attack, I always thought about taking the Eclipse to do some autocross, but um, like in Angel Stadium, they actually um, there's actually an autocross little. It's not a league, but it's more of like um, 
like an arrive and drive kind of thing where every month at the end of the month they always do like a little track inside Angel Stadium and then yeah. it's like a hundred dollars and you get to go like a couple times a day which is pretty cool I would if you're gonna do that just record the whole thing no of course and I would put it on the channel of course of course but... and do it and do a drift as well no I, I can't drift in the clips dude I mean, I could, yeah. I would drift it if I, you know, if I made it into a skid plate car, but apart from that, you know, there's no other way I really could. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be fun. That'd be fun to see you driving there. I want to see how you do with going all across. I wouldn't push too hard just because, you know, it's my daily driver. And plus, it's not even that, it's not even like a, it's not even a competition car or anything like that. Even before you win the class. It's not even a winning class. It's just, um, it's like a track day kind of thing. I know, but still, just, I think if you could if you could make it in one piece, that'd be great. Yeah, exactly. That's and just to have fun in general, and just to you know get just to get the experience of actually going and, and hauling ass with the um, the eclipse is what it matters at the end of the day. It needs some more fast brakes, yo. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I'll just keep it black. <laughs> I know. I'm joking around. I know. I know. But yeah, that's right. what I'm. That's, that's what I'm just saying, right? Cars are meant for our like art. I know that, like, uh, why well, I would say normies, I guess, say that's for like you know from point A to point B. Yeah. But for me and for you and for others, that's not the case. No, of course, dude. Of course, it's like if it's it's like any other hobby, honestly. If it's just like if you enjoy it and you enjoy putting money and in, investing money into something that you love, then what's the problem? I mean, you can argue the same thing when people collect stamps or people have like. You know, like stupid collections like that. You know what I mean? It's just like, well, I'm not saying it's a stupid collection for anyone that collects stamps in the chat, but I'm just saying like my hobby is different from your hobby, so just leave me alone. <laughs> Honestly, leave me alone. Hey, guess what, dude? What? How you doing? We're a third of the way there. We're second, and we're trailing the NSX that's leading the race, the one who sat on pole. Dude, it's already been a third of the race. <laughs> Time goes quick. I guess the whole like. GT3 versus Merch STV topic got real quick, I guess. No, definitely, dude. And, like, like I, I appreciate the conversation just because, like, it makes the race more interesting. And this race has been okay so far. I mean, we've been chasing down this NSX the entire time. But, yeah, I mean, I guess to make it fair, like, to end the whole conversation, I don't mind what car it is. I don't mind if it's Mercedes, AMG, GT3. I don't mind it's BMW, M8. It doesn't matter if it's a, it, BMW M8, like, you know, a huge thing, which I know it's a joke from Lamont, but you get the point. It doesn't matter right. if it's a, it doesn't matter if it's a, you know, a Subaru BRZ, it doesn't matter if it's a Prius. GT300 right now, it looks great, in my opinion. No, definitely. It's, it's a huge part of the sport as well, of Super GT racing. I mean, even me as, like, I wouldn't say I'm a diehard fan, I'm more of a casual fan because it's my first year watching, but um, even I knew that, you know, GT300 is still a huge part of the series, you know, because of Gran Turismo and stuff. I think in Super GT, it's like more of like Gran Turismo, like the real Gran Turismo, like, wacky, like, not wacky, but like, very fast race cars, and you're like, the best, like, not the, how, is it already the best drivers? I think it is, in my opinion, maybe yeah. besides that one. Yeah, yeah, Super GT does have like, some really good talent, dude. I mean, look look this year. You have, what, Jensen Button in the series now? Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like some of, and some of these guys that came then, from the... Like, some of the Toyota guys, some of them just came back from... Uh, oops, hit, hit like, the Lamont. wall. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, yeah. well. But, you know, some of the guys did came back from Le Mans. Yeah, so, like Kobayashi, right? Isn't he racing in Super GT? Yeah. So, it Who's does make sense. Who's he racing for again? I think it's one of the Lexus cars. Of course, it's Toyota Lexus. Yeah. I don't know, it's just, it's just part of their thing, I guess. Yeah, probably for, uh, commitment to brand and stuff. Yeah, but basically, I, I just like Super GT as a whole, and I don't think it really needs to change. I know there's one thing they're probably going to do, though. Super GT versus DTM. Right, it, the Class 1 regulations. I was just going to ask you about that right now. Like, I'm not really following the whole Class 1 thing. Like. Are they going to do DTM rules or Super GT rules, or what's, what's the deal I, with that? I don't know. Check it out, but they, I think they're trying to, like, compromise, I guess, on things. Because remember, if DTM does not do this whole Super GT thing, they're probably trying to, like, actually do the DTM versus GTE compromise. That was their group, uh, B, uh, their, like, plan B. But I guess they finally fixed it, but I'm probably going to take a look maybe later on. 
can see how much like they're probably gonna compromise. But there are some like just remember the fact that GT 500 changed from like you know the Skyline and the Super S etc. Yeah, they start they start to become a little bit boxy, I guess. Kind of like DTM. Right. They kind of look like. In fact, they, in fact, some of the guys like in News Nintendo TV did point out it kind of looks like DTM but more faster. It's more grippier. Yeah, I'm about to say, aren't the Super GT cars like a, kind of like an Amiga on their own? I mean, I could be wrong on that. I, I'm not really sure because I don't really follow you know, DTM either. But uh, yeah, it's that's what that's why people want Super GT more than DTM. It's way faster. It probably could just compete against a you know an LP2 for the sake of why not? Maybe not. That's really not, maybe not. I mean, they're they're having claims, but. I don't know exactly, but it could, could be as faster, like maybe a lower prototype, I guess. Maybe an LMP3. That sounds more realistic. Yeah, but um, basically, it's just, it's quite fast for like a, you know, a non-prototype car. It's right. Like the fast GT, GT cars. Car. Yeah, yeah. That's what I heard about Super GT as well. Like I heard that you know there are the fastest GT cars in the world as well, and I do believe that because of the specs they have, definitely. But um, in terms of beating a like an LMP2, I mean, okay, maybe. Maybe if they race against, I don't know, BR1 ATS AFS Racing, maybe, but in L in IMSA. But if you're going up against the DPI, I think it's a whole different story. Definitely a whole different story with LMP1. But an LMP2 car, I mean, I think it's kind of it's, kind, it's quite eh, I guess. Oh, but. we just took the lead right now. NSX just pitted. Oh, nice. So it looks like the NSX is probably gonna do a two-stop race because he stopped on lap 13. His next stop will most likely be on 26. We're we're still going because we have really good rubber. Nice. So, you know, I don't really mind. As long as these, those kind of cars are pretty fast, I'm pretty damn happy at least. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I do agree with you on one thing. You know, if, if DTM and Super GT are going to merge or whatever it is, I just hope the DTM cars are going to be are as faster. fast as... Exactly. I don't want them to nerf the Super GT cars to match the DTM because I want, you know, I, I would want the more of the power. I would want the equal power and all that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, I didn't, basically, I, I think this might be a, a wake-up call for DTM to be faster, to be more grippier. They I cannot mean, be the same spec series or whatever, because guess what? That ain't gonna work. I mean, who's who's left DTM so far? I think it's just Audi, right? I did, yeah, Audi's like staying, obviously, but I think it's for driven. Oh, it's Merce oh no, it's Mercedes. Mercedes is leaving. That's right. It's Mercedes I'm that's leaving because of Formula E. It was Audi who left uh, WEC because of Formula E. That's right. Yeah. Basically, there are only two like manufacturers so far in DTM, which is not a lot compared to say, you know, GT500, which is three. So that's like three versus two. You have like a three chance that more likely a GT500 cars would win. Right. So hopefully the DTM cars get buffed to meet the Super GT cars with power and all that stuff. Basically, yeah. If they manage to buff the DTMs, I'm not gonna be mad. At least it works. That way, I can have like, more choices for you know more cars. Heck, maybe if, if these people really do hate those FYG3s that much, maybe have some of these guys race a uh, DTM. Because why not? Is I it mean, not? Is it? I mean, I mean, it's not just fans that hate the the GT300s, right? It's also what the the fellow compet the rivals or what? I mean, I don't think the rivals that much big of a deal. I mean, it's just probably because of BLP. I mean, because BLP is helping some teams a lot. It really depends, because you know Super GT has the best BLP in the world. Oh, do they? I, yeah, I mean it's it kind of makes more sense because they have their own like success valves, which is not like you know IMSA's. Yeah, because because er, last year every single weekend, Wayne Taylor Racing got BLP and they still <laughs> ended up dominating the weekends and stuff. I mean, I wasn't mad because I'm a WTR fan, but that's just strange. I mean, it just shows how fast the Cadillacs were. But anyway, so, so yeah, you were saying that they were the best, and they're the best in BLP. Like, it depends like how each week goes. Because I know there's like a certain point in the BLP where if you hit that much more, you're gonna be slow, guaranteed. Okay. There's like a certain breaking point for both GT 500s and 300s. So you could win a few races, but then once you hit that part, you're gonna have an issue, or. You, it doesn't have to be like the car like could be heavy. It could be either a flat tire, it could be, you know, whatever, so they could go back down. They need to have at least maybe like not the best brakes, I guess. 
Ah, okay. At times so you get back lower. So if you really want to win the championship, you need to be very consistent, at least. No, of course. That, That's what that, every single series is like that, you know? Yeah, and I think it worked out pretty well. I mean, last year when Hatsune Miku, well, why, why do I say Hatsune Miku AMG? I mean, people are making jokes about the car, like, you know, being like it's all like its own self anyways. Yeah. But anyways, Good Smart Racing, when they won their championship, they were very consistent. The only problems they had during that season were two flat tires at, uh, at the second race of the season and Suzuka. That's it. Oh, really? Everything else, everything else was just pure, like maybe like top five, top four at least. They won the first race and they got third at the final race of the season. And that's what people are so mad about? I guess, because it's an anime car? I mean, is that the only complaint, that it's an anime car? And, and that's why people like, and complain GT3. about it? And GT3. Oh. And probably... So that's two reasons that I think. And probably because you have the best team in the business. Because the drivers in that team were very good. Nob and... and I don't know what the other guy's name I can't really say it right now. But those two were very good drivers to begin with. One of them, I think, was doing drifting back then D at D1. Oh, yeah, the D1 is... If you're from D1, then you definitely know how to drive a car, for sure. That is, like, the best drift series, period. Even better than the Formula Drift here in the U.S. Yeah, and that saves them. So, if they probably had the best drivers in general to begin with. Probably the best team, because they were supported by fans. Die-hard fans, to be exact. Yeah. They would even... They would buy like Hatsune Miku figures or the diecast or shirts, which I don't mind. They're fans, and I would probably do the same if I had enough money. But and if you live in they, Japan, and you live in Japan, because that's just hard for us. Like you know, United States fans, please help us get some off. God damn it! But, <laughs> yeah, because over here, if you want to import, you know, Hatsune Miku. Good Smile Racing, whatever the team is called. I think that's what they're called, right? Hatsune Miku? Yeah. Good Smile? It's, it's, it's Good Smile Hatsune Miku AMD. Okay, that's, just, that's, just making sure. That's the, that's the car name in general. Actually, the, the shorter name is just DSR Hatsune Miku AMG. That's what it's called. Gotcha. Every, every single race. Like, yeah, that's what, and people, that's why people will say that car's a sheet. Okay, okay, I, I get it now. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to buy the gear, obviously it's much harder here. you got to pay import fees, and then it's probably just be more in general. I mean, that. I mean, there were some like stores like Tokyo Octaku Mode where they you ship it to here in the United States. Oh, no way. There's a, really? Yeah. There's actually a few diecasts, actually. Guess how much they are. How much are they? A hundred bucks. Okay, that sounds about reasonable for a diecast model. <laughs> That's, that's, that's not reasonable, but that sounds about right, I should say. Because just remember, these cars are, like, you know, not from here. You could buy, like, say, 600, 60 bucks on a, you know, indie car. But, like, you know, you know, bigger than like that. But the one by, Japan, one by 18 scale, I think? Yeah, but here in Japan, it's different. Because, just remember, some of these cars, I don't think a lot of people know about these. A normally, like, you know, American race fan. Hang on, hang Probably on a not. By the way, oh. Sky Hurricane says, By the way, I recommend using Racing Super Sauce for everything in this game. Even the Endurances? Hang on, hang on. I'm going to finish reading the comment after I get through the chicane slowly. Tire rear isn't really a factor in GT1 and GT2, although the grip is a significant factor. Oh, really? Okay, well, thanks, Sky. Well, well I'm pretty sure the kick is alive now. Power tires don't do anything. Well, I mean, Sky Hurricane's like the master of freaking GT1 and GT2, so he, kn he knows this game much better than I do, because I only played it, like, a few times as a kid. I mostly played number three, but, um, oh. yeah, that NSX, obviously, on much fresher rubber is catching up, but, um, yeah, I'm going to hold him off. Just do the move. Just do it. That's what you have to do, right? Oh, he's just punching me. <laughs> and he just punched uh. me into the wall. All right. GG, <laughs> bud. <laughs> Sky Hurricane says you can do 10 to 15 laps of any track with the Racing Super Softs, and your lap times will be 3 to 5 seconds better per lap. Okay. Well, thank you for that, Sky. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, change it to Softs for the next Endurance. We have a, we have a new crew chief here. Yep. But, um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I would definitely get one of those die casts, maybe, just for the sake of it. Oh, of course. Just so, like... Just like this, put this place, uh, I just play it at my like at my rooms. So you can just see it later when it comes to my house. Yeah. Just have like a box of like 
just like maybe hang it somewhere. Well, I've, I've always like... wanted to collect diecast models, but the problem is I don't have space, dude. I mean, I first of all I share a room. Second, um, you know, just my brother who I share my room with, you know, he, he just takes up all the space with like his records and stuff. So I'm just like, uh, I don't really have space for my own. I only have space for my setup for streaming and put in gaming in general, and that's really about it. Give me the space. <laughs> Where is the space? There's another F1 reference. Check. <laughs> I ain't good. You had to meet your I mean, quota, huh, for your F1 references? I mean, you, I mean, you gotta make it entertaining, right? No, of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're doing a good job at it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll probably want to get those diecasts in a rip. I mean, there's another thing that's happening here in LA in like two weeks. I'm at 12. Oh, yeah, I yeah. I wonder if they're gonna have diecasts there. Maybe if I found one, definitely, I'll probably buy it. Do they have Good Smile um, merchandise at the Expo? Uh, I mean, Good Smile Company. That's the one. That's that's the company that's sponsoring the team. They're gonna be here. In oh, NXO. they're a company, not a racing team. Well, it, it, that's what they started out. They started as a company. They got all like you know, they're the ones to make like you know those figures and everything, all that all that stuff. But they're the ones then sponsoring. You, the, oh, okay. But just just remember that they sponsored since 2009. That's how old how old that team is. Gotcha. In fact, they're probably, and right now there's like I think they're celebrating their 10th anniversary with SMU. Actually, 10th anniversary of SMU in general. That's what they're celebrating right now with that car, with the team and everything. Oh no way! Okay, that's that's pretty cool. I actually didn't know that. In fact, in a few days uh, before MX Expo, we're gonna have a SMU. Actually, no, it's not an SMU. It's an it's a Miku Expo in Microsoft in Microsoft Center in LA. Oh, that's pretty cool, actually. So basically, I will. I think basically, you know, a Vocaloid doing not not only being like well known here in the United States, but you know, in the United States but around the world. Yeah. And also also spawn being part of a team which is like OPSL at times. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's more you know, I guess. I mean, some of the music is pretty good. I mean, it's it's a little annoying at some. It's a little bit high pitched, <laughs> but it's pretty good. I mean, I'll probably set maybe like. Sky Hurricane says you probably should pit. Yeah, I was planning on pitting on this lap. It's a one-stop race, so we're we're gonna be good to the end. I mean, the NSX is gonna pit again, and we're gonna hold them off for what four laps or so, so we're fine. But yeah, uh, I might probably like close. Maybe next time when I have like more time, or when we meet up, we probably just show some Vocaloid music videos. Cause why not? <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to show me some because I, I have no idea. It's basically. Uh, I don't know, it's like music made by machines, then they had to make them to characters, blah blah blah. It's probably way more stuff than just that to begin with. What is it? But is it Japanese music or something? Like, because the only. It's Japanese. I mean, the, Japanese. The, the only music, and the only like group I know from Japan is Baby Metal, that's really it. Just because when I, I, used, I used to work at a video I mean, game store and like one of my coworkers would play Baby Metal all the time, and I was just like, what is this? Like, some of those songs are kind of <laughs> hard, but then others, I'm just like, I don't know what the hell is going on. All I right, mean, we're pitting Japanese now. Japan to begin with is like you know interesting music. I mean, there's you know there's idol culture, I guess. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. Just to, like, and I think there will be some of them that will be in LA, not just for like probably for the expo. Yeah. So I might post you on that. Maybe I'll update you when I'm when I'm there for sure. Yeah, for sure. I've actually never been to Anime Expo. I mean, like like I like I told you many times, and for those who don't really know in chat, I mean, because I never talk about it, I'm not really a fan of anime, although I do plan on watching Initial D this summer for sure, but um, yeah, I'm not really a big fan of anime, so this is kind of all like news to me, you know? Yeah, but at least you understand, right? Right, right, because I, I have a sister who's really into anime, but that's really about it. I mean, well, I'm probably going to do something, but I'm just going to hang out with friends and etc. I'm going to get some stuff. Uh, but I'm, I'm brought, yeah, and all that stuff. I don't know. There's so much to buy. And yeah. I still haven't bought my, and I still haven't bought my ticket yet. So I'm probably gonna do it today or tomorrow. Yeah, you want to do that soon, dude. I mean, from what I hear, doesn't AX get sold out? Uh, it doesn't actually. Oh no, they, there's there's no oh. um, there's no counts for tickets. Like for no some cap? reason, and this is unfor this is a fortunate and unfortunate circumstance because fortunately you could just wait and like say maybe then the uh, months to buy tickets. Okay. Or buy like the badges. That's what they're called, badges. Right, like the like every, every yeah. But um, the problem is that when when every time it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, because the attendance just keeps going up. 
there will be more bumps because there's gonna be long lines. Some of the events are gonna be packed. Some of them might not even make it to the event, wherever the event they want to go. What, like panels and stuff, or what? Yeah, there have been two panels that are like now need of like wristbands because they can't fit everyone to the, like the room. Well, like ours would be here, what? Uh, kind of like that, yeah. And there have been rumors of people staying at 4 a.m. opening day. Damn. There, there are rumors so far, but if, I, if it's gonna happen, it will happen. That's uh, why I'm not going for. That's I, why I'm not going for some of those panels because it's just too damn full. I mean, that, that's if that's not commitment, I have no idea what is, dude. It's just anime fans, man. Just anime fans. The same thing with racing fans. Like there will be some people that will be up early just to like see well, practice. Well, of course, that's me. I go to Long Beach Grand Prix every year of the Long Beach Grand Prix. I'm always at the track like at six in the morning for IMSA practice. Oh, exactly. That's the same thing with anime, like anime fans in general. So you just can't wait, really Wanda. But um, I don't know. Let's see what's hap what will happen. I'm probably gonna maybe get some stuff, maybe like. And since my house is getting really full, of so much stuff, I might get some racing stuff from the Grand Prix. Because my I'm starting to have a problem with having all my autographs in one place now. Oh, your hero cards or what? Hero cards, um, programs. I need to give some away. I'm serious. Do, I'm a, really do a giveaway on your channel or something? I don't know. <laughs> like, no, how about this? How about this? I give you some of your stuff. Give you the, the stuff, and you to give. How about that? That doesn't sound like a bad idea at all. We can talk about that after the stream. Yeah, but anyways, you know, in the future. Basically, I just need. I just think I need need like house cleaning. I guess because my mom's getting really pissed off. <laughs> So much stuff being like lying around in the closet, Jeez. and my mom's like, and my mom's like, "What is all the junk?" I'm like, "Really? Your autographs, mom? Do you even understand me? No? Okay." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think she really understands. Like, I mean, what? You're the only racing fan in your family, right? Exactly. Yes. I I feel your pain. <laughs> Everybody else in my my family's into soccer. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, you were talking about that whole. Mexico not winning today. Yeah, like that was that was a shock, dude. Like honestly, well, I mean, not really a shock, but I, I was kind of surprised. I didn't think they would actually lose to Sweden, but then again, my sister was informing me that Sweden's a really good team. It is. It, I mean, if you play against a European team in general, you cannot uh, underestimate them. You yep. really cannot. And I was surprised that Germany lost to South Korea today. Like that was surprising <laughs> as well. They actually did lose to South Korea. No wonder they didn't make it. <laughs> God, yeah. that's how. That's what happens when you be too cocky. You just end up losing, like you know, a couple games, and you're out. Or it's. Moment. Or my sister was saying it's the World Cup curse. So like, if you're the if you're the champion of if you're the, the yeah. if you're the defending champions of the World Cup, then you're guaranteed to lose the first round of the next World Cup because it's happened to every team since like 2002. Yeah, that's why. Uh, that would be funny if say United States. Well, because I know the United States did not make the World Cup this year. But imagine they win the World Cup that the next the next four years. Oh, dude, I would love for that to happen, honestly. Yeah, and it, once that happens, I'm just gonna be like, oh god, we're we'll fucking out of the first round. I mean, I'm a huge supporter of Argentina, but um, the United States is definitely the second team I support for sure. Yeah, and I feel really bad for them. They lost to a small team, I think Trin Trinidad. Yeah, dude, I, I think it was them. It was some other, or yeah, yeah, it, yeah, probably it was, was Trinidad. That, that would knock them out, basically. And now Parma's getting absolutely bomb wrecked by everyone else. Yeah, man, that's that's really unfortunate. But I hope they come back strong for the next one. Sure. Yeah, I mean, the, the, it's not done yet. Oops, wait, wait, but as the as the core of these uh, this stream, we're not done with the whole of my group stage yet. There's some. <laughs> some are still now you're sounding like a real YouTuber as of this recording. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to improve my um, skills here, dude. <laughs> Why are you doing a good job so far, man? Yeah, dude. Like I said, man, why don't you... You should start streaming, dude. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. I don't, yeah, maybe get... I don't know. It's so much... Because of, like, college and stuff, which, by the way, I know you're, like, almost done, I guess. With, your side. Com with community college. Yeah, community college. There you go. Um, but I probably might look for time. I just need, like, the right equipment. Except it's, it's something like that. Well, I mean, your equipment doesn't really have to be fancy. I mean, um... I mean, I, I like honestly, like you know, you could just get a decent mic. I mean, just to get started, you know what I mean? Like, I started with a potato mic, and then eventually one of my subscribers donated me a Boost Snowball, so that was nice. And then I just like, 
you know, I bought a capture card for twenty dollars because I just got super lucky with one on Craigslist. Even though the AV, even though the AVN is kind of busted, it won't work with one cable, but it works with the PS3 cable. So there's that, you know. And it's just like, you know, as long as you can get your foot in the door and just get started with something, and people just start tuning in, then that's what matters at the beginning. You know what I mean? Can we just imagine I, the way you said about that uh, potato, uh, like you know, my. Can someone draw like a race car driver with a potato mic? Like, full like, potato? <laughs> yeah, have a crew chief, like, our spotter on the on the spotting stand, like, with a potato to his ear. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Someone needs to do it ASAP. I, I know an artist, he probably can do it. <laughs> I'm just trying to put some more memes right here, because, you know, we already have that daddy meme from Oh, C4. yeah, yep. I mean... Well, that's gonna be the meme of this channel. I mean, I mean, you can blame Hot Noodles for that. Noodles is the one who started that meme in the first place. I mean, Marvin was the one who clipped it on Twitch, and then Noodles is the one who kept kept saying it. So I was just like, you know what? Like, it's pretty. It is pretty funny. I mean, I think the other meme that we're probably gonna have is the app, like the beginner hour meme, because I think me and you, me or you, have been talking about like saying that every time we did a race for some reason. Oh, you mean like when I would stream earlier and like I would screw up my own streams with like mic problems and stuff? Well, not just that, but people being bad in general in race games. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Work. And then the, our our recordings get ruined. <laughs> oh, I'm ga- dude. It. I'm gaining on the NSX. I think the NSX. Is, yeah, his tires are like completely worn, and I'm on pressure rubber, so I'm gaining on him. We're gonna win the race for sure. Nah, he's probably do a I do a long so and to lose. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm I know that's. It, Alonso won the Le Mans race, guys. I know, but he still has bad luck. Oh, he's in, in, he, in, endurance race in the Toyota, it, dude. You shouldn't have brought up that fact. Otherwise, now my car's gonna break down in the last lap. Oh wait, you're Toyota, right? Oh wait, I'm not racing against other. No, no, I am racing against other manufacturers. I was gonna say, I was gonna take a jab at Toyota, but you know, honestly, like everyone taking jabs at Toyota and WEC for winning all the races right now because they're the only hybrid engines. Like, I don't know. I mean. I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. How do you feel about that? Uh, I mean, it's not really that competitive because all the privateers got like the, they didn't do well once the flag, green flag was happening. Once the green flag happens, all the privateers were having issues. Except for Lauderer, yeah. who's the star of the show. By I think he hit one of the Toyotas. I think or I one don't. of the GTs or one of the. I cannot remember who Lauderer hit, but Lauderer pretty much hit somebody in the first corner at Circuit Del Sol. Yeah. It wasn't the best day for like the, the privateer teams. No, definitely I think, not. I think what uh, AC ACL needs to do, and if I maybe like close the gap a little bit, just a little bit, not too far, just like a little bit. But my question is, how are they going to close the gap if the Toyota manufacturer team is the only? Why did I just say it like that? If Toyota is the only manufacturer that has hybrid motors and everybody else has regular motors, you know, there's Toyota has that have, huge advantage. I mean, we'll see what happens once we get to the 2020 Red Bull. That's what I'm curious about. Well, I'm just hoping for the DPIs. I'm, I'm hoping for something similar to like DPI, so that way maybe some empty team can come over to the top class. And, but, yeah. and then all of a sudden, Jordan Taylor becomes the overall, win, overall like the monster winner. Well, I'm thinking, why not? I'm thinking Penske would probably be the ones to look out for. So you want Elio Castroneves to uh, like get Of course, the... man. That's my childhood hero. You know that. <laughs> I, I mean, he's also my childhood hero, too. So, I mean, I, I've been hanging out, with him, hanging out with him when I was in, when he was in Long Beach. Oh, yeah. At, um, what, what was the hotel called again? Uh, was it the Hilton? No, I, no, no. Hyatt. Oh, the Hyatt. Hyatt. That's right, the Hyatt. Right there on, on the on the seaside. He's a, he's a bro. He's a um, peer bro. No, yeah. Elio's great, dude. Honestly. I think... And I think it's the same with Jordan and Ricky Taylor, even though they're in separate teams. They're no, still of course. Cool. Yeah, yeah, Jordan and Ricky are really, really cool down-to-earth people. I mean, the only driver, I mean, it's very sad for me to say this because I'm such a huge fan of him, but the only driver who really gave any problems to any of my friends was uh, Montoya with JPM. Because, like, I mean, eh, Montoya's a bit old, I guess. Not I even think that. Him. I think he's always kind of been a douche since he was... You know, since he was racing. I mean, that's the thing, dude. When I met him back in 99, dude, he was super nice. But then again, he was a rookie. And then, like, now think, everyone just says he's really disrespectful. He just He's just not fan-friendly at all. Oh, with the NSX pitting. Nice. All right, race is pretty the, much over. Uh, you got this? Yeah, six to go, and um, NSX is pitting. Long straight wow. away. We pretty much have it now. 
Wow, time really does go quick. Jesus Christ. <sighs> but I think Mentoria, I think he just, I think racing kind of changed him. But I guess some of the worst. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, in terms of maybe not having privacy, maybe maybe being recognized everywhere you go, maybe that kind of messes with people. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't really blame him if that's the case because you know some people just when it comes to meeting celebrities or race car drivers or sportsmen or whoever, dude, people just get weird, man. Like, I'll tell you, <laughs> one of my buddies went to a sprint car race, I think Cocopa Speedway in Arizona, and Casey Kane was there. And literally, Casey Kane arrived to the track, and there was some dude who was waiting with his daughter, dude. And Casey Kane barely opened the door of his car, dude. He barely opened the door, and guess what happened? What? Casey, 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 can you take a picture with my daughter? Can you take a picture with my daughter? It's like, dude, um, chill. Nah. Dude, I mean, I, he didn't take even. Time. Dude, the man didn't even take a breath, dude. Like, he, he barely just. I don't How know. How many years ago? How many years ago was this? I think it was a couple. It, one of my buddies who goes to, like, he travels not around the country, but around, like, the West Coast a lot for these kind of races. He was telling me about this. I mean, Casey really needs, like, I think I feel bad for Casey because nowadays he wasn't at the best of his career. Yeah, no, of course. And, I mean, he did come from the USAC background, right? Yeah. I think. So, but, um... It, I mean, back to Montoya, I mean, I think I could understand it because, remember, he have been to different series. He went from IndyCar, F1, NASCAR, back to IndyCar. Back to IMSA, or not back to IMSA, to IMSA. And now back, now to IMSA, basically. So he's been gone to every series of bar. That is like, well, no. And, and maybe just overall, like, kind of experiencing, you know, different, you know, different types of fan bases and stuff. And I, I don't know. Yeah, like, you can't, first of all, he's, oh, 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 uh, first of all, I have a quick question. What does IndyCar look like fans? I mean, basically fans in the car in 1990s because I know there was a split which... uh, oh okay um, very divided obviously the split really killed the fan base dude I mean you, you had your cart fans you had your IRL fans you had your cart diehards you had your IRL diehard or not your IRL they had your IMS Indy 500 diehards you know it's just like dude have you ever watched this documentary called 500 miles apart yeah dude that one that is that documentary, for those who don't know in chat or watching this recording, um, basically is a documentary by ESPN. It was literally done maybe the day of, the day before, the day of, and the day after the Indy 500 slash US 500 1996. For those who don't know as well, look up the open wheel split because it's a long story, which I'm not really going to get into right now. But the point is, when all that happened, you could tell, dude, at that time, the fan bases were just really split apart dude just the reaction from the general public overall was just ah oh, man it was really bad but i'm just glad that indycar racing is like making a comeback now it, yeah i know we're back to like you know it's indycar but it has some kind of car flair to it yeah yeah of course dude so it's kind of good to say but basically so you're saying that so basically the fan race is not great i guess during that time then you got into f1 and it's how can i say it's so smug Smug, rich people. I know it's not all of the F1 fans, but you get the point, right? Right. Not only that, just the politics of the sport in general, and just like the FIA's treatment of Ferrari and all that. Probably, I don't know. Could probably mess oh, with yeah. you overall. Dude. Oh yeah, he wasn't on Ferrari. I remember because he's driving. What did he drove for? Williams and McLaren. So yeah, he's basically with, like the second fiddle. That's yeah, major at the time. Yeah, definitely. Dude, he, oh no, he was the second fiddle. Well, I well I technically not even dude. He was more the third fiddle because Rubens Barrichello was the second fiddle, and he was a Ferrari driver, dude. That that team was basically Scuderia Michael Schumacher, dude. Honestly, it's just the Michael show. Which, by the way, I respect to Michael. By the way, because you know it wasn't his fault. Which is no, oh, of course, of course not. I mean, you can't blame a man for having talent and you know being in be, having like the right. The right car, the right engineers, the right equipment, everything, you know? Yeah, and I don't really hate for it, and I still respect him to this day. And, ne and neither do I, because although I don't like dominance in motorsports, it's something that, I, I, like I said earlier, I accept it because it's part of the sport itself, you know? Oh, yeah, and by the way, uh, get, I know this uh, Michael will not hear this. I mean, he'll definitely not hear this, but I hope he gets well soon, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, I I'm not really sure 
I'm not really sure how he's doing, but I, I wouldn't really want to talk about that right here. But anyways, um, yeah. Back well, to anyways, the uh, back to the JPM topic, and then you go to NASCAR, and oh, oh my, my god. god, just because it is, like it is bad. It, I mean, I'm not bad. I mean, no, the fan base isn't bad. I'm not. I'm not saying like oh my god. I'm, I'm not trying to say that NASCAR fans, you know, need to stereotype. It's, it's, it's just that like it's a huge difference because you just exactly. jumped from F1, and now you go into like a Saturn like feel. You're going to a more open, friendly environment, but then at the same time, you're you're driving for Ganassi, which honestly, before Kyle Larson came around, Ganassi garbage. equipment was exactly it was garbage, dude. I mean, Montoya won races, but yeah, he almost won in Sonoma, and he almost won Indy, but however, he screwed himself up because why not? Oh, that's so right. Mad. I forgot he almost won the Brickyard. Yeah, and he got pissed off for it. Hey, uh, I, would, I wouldn't blame him, dude. I would be too. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, wait. I mean, it's not that like you know, Kyle Busch, like you know, anger. I mean, or Kurt back then. Whatever. Anyways, so and then he left to Indy, uh, NASCAR to IndyCar, which right now should be at least a little bit recovered. I think. Oh 50%. no, it's, it's it's definitely heading that direction, dude, for sure. So it's actually a little bit better, I guess, and then gone to. IMSA, which is basically, I guess, the up and coming, one of the best um, series right now. Su yeah, one of the best, like, right, Supercar and Oval. Yeah, it is. Definitely. I mean, I mean, people really do like IMSA a lot, and that's why I think I know why there's some people that would rather watch the Sebring IMSA race than the Sebring WEC race, which I know, I mean, I'll probably watch both for me. But. Oh, me too. I'm watching both for sure. I want to go to Sebring, dude, just for that, honestly. But, I I, I mean, I'm looking at it as, like, real, a realistic standpoint. Like, that's a lot of money. <laughs> so, I'm just yeah. like, I'm not going to be able to have that money to go to Sebring for both a WEC and an IMSA event, you know? And who, yeah, whoever goes there is a lucky uh, guy or gal, whoever it is. Definitely. I, yeah. I mean, that would be awesome just to see both like sports car racing in you know then but, yeah then again but, i mean coda did do that as well circuit of the americas did do that with imsa and wc but the problem was yeah. that nobody showed up i I'm, i wish i would show up if that would if that happens close to me i would definitely go oh of course dude i would i would plan a road trip dude but unfortunately nothing like that is around here by the way two laps yeah. to go and the nsx is barely entering the straightaway so we have to start pushing because he's obviously on much fresher rubber. But I want to say there's about a 10 to 15 second gap. Okay, so we're still good, right? Yeah, we're good. We're good to the end, hopefully. Seriously, seriously though, this whole conversation is just so, so damn quick. I didn't expect to have a... No, I didn't even have like a script to follow on, so it's fully uncensored, whatever. Mikhail, you shouldn't me. have said that. Now they know that this, this whole conversation has been scripted the whole time. There's no script here! <laughs> God, oh. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Anyways, um, I mean, I mean, well, I mean, we're not scripted like NASCAR. Come on here. Yeah, we don't just say boogity 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 all the time. Uh, oh, by the way, I hate Daryl Waltrip's commentary. <laughs> I, I, I don't like Daryl Waltrip, dude. Honestly, I don't like the whole boogity 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 thing. I just hated it on like some. I, I said on some on the chat just for the sake of pure irony. I wouldn't even be surprised. If it's not, even if it's not NASCAR. Probably it's would. <laughs> I mean, um, Jeff Gordon's okay, I guess. I mean, I know there's like some bias. Oh, no, I, I like Jeff Gordon. I think Jeff Gordon kind of gives a new uh, breath of fresh air to Fox's coverage, for sure. Yeah, but I, I just, maybe I just won him the race a few times. At least, like, you know, get him a real clear head, I guess. Like, sports car racing. Uh, he's probably not going to do it. He already won Daytona. I mean, I know he wants to take a crack at Le Mans one day, but I don't know how serious he is about that. Just give him like Cadillac. This is this is why they we keep guys in the mods. Heck, Jeff Gordon could probably do it for a second if, if uh, you know Wayne Taylor Racing has a chance. Maybe. I mean Daytona. Yeah, he did win Daytona, but Le Mans a whole nother can of worms. And by the way, final lap. All right. Um. So we gotta take it easy on this lap. I do not want to throw this race away. If you do, I'm just so gonna roast you for sure. Yeah, yeah, and everyone in the chat has the right to roast me too. No, no uh, banning, <laughs> no ban hammer for anyone. 
the mods and the rest of the guys just roast the hell out of you. That would play itself. So, um, by the way, you recently got a Dreamcast, right? Yeah, I did actually own a Dreamcast a few weeks ago. I got time to do it because, you know, the obvious uh, plug burnout from like the, the power, you know, the power outlet. But once I get fixed, I'm probably going to need to buy a few games once I be done with the whole anime expo thing. I know Test Drive Lamar would be one of them. Oh, hell they... yeah, dude. Buy, um, I mean, maybe you won't like the game because the physics are kind of questionable. And, um, it's the an car, arcade game, so. The, the car, yeah, exactly. It's an arcade game. The cars kind of handle like crap, but on especially on ovals, but flag to flag. The, the game, the champ car game. Oh, I hear, I heard so. I, I watched the um, like the game, the classic game room review of that. Game. Yeah, it's, classic. He, that's like one of the games that CGR absolutely hates, dude. But I mean, it's fun to play still. I mean, what's what's your thought about the game? Because I already heard about him, so he was just not happy at all. Apart from the que about uh, uh, apart from the questionable physics and just the really shitty handling of the champ cars. It's still a fun game to play. You shouldn't have to lift on turn one. Yeah, you shouldn't have to lift on Shoreline in Long Beach. You shouldn't have to lift at Fontana. You shouldn't have to lift at Michigan, you know. But regardless, we're going to have to lift at this final corner because we just came out of the final corner and now we can get back on the power. And the first endurance race of Grand Turismo 1 is down. We win the special stage all night enduro number two. That's just packs. Be peace. Please be a BLP next race. <laughs> no, dude. Uh, my tires, dude. Honestly, no. No, the NSX is really good, dude. The NSX is OP here. I just. I know. I'm, I know. I'm just joking. Around. <laughs> <laughs> I obviously won on strat. Well, it was strategy. Yeah, but I, I mean, mean you, some. I think one guy helped you out too. So I'll try yeah, Sky Hurricane for sure. I mean, he helped me out a little bit. So I appreciate that. All right. So. 57 minutes, 41 seconds, and 472 milliseconds is oh, our wow. finishing time. So we, and we finished, we finished this under like one hour. Yep, 150,000 credits. And, uh, hold on a second, let me save the replay. And, let's go check out our prize car. And before it gets a shitty car, <laughs> I'll be laughing. I just nearly chucked myself on the uh, pickle lemonade I just drank. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so moment of truth. What do we win? Get a Prius. Nice! It's you! It's the it's the car that comes out on the intro, the Nismo GTR L LM road car. Nice! Sweet! I'm actually really happy with this prize. Oh, not bad. So you got a GTO R3. Is it an R33? Yes, it's an R33. Yep, it's an R33. Nice. That's actually that's actually a pretty good car. I'm actually really happy with that. So next up on Gran Turismo, we're going to be doing the Nations Cups, maybe, or we'll do another Enduro. I don't know yet. I'll figure it out. But yeah, that's it for this race.